Okay, guys. I have been dying to try my new silk screens. I don't know if you saw my unboxing or not. But I've got pairs of wings, dragonfly wings, and then I have single wings. And I'm going to do the <clears throat> medium size today. And I just dropped my acetate sheet on the floor. That helps to protect these. And these are the Allison Merritt designer silk screens that are from RJ Crafts. Um, you know, I'm on their design team and I am just learning so much about some of these awesome products. So, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to put the shiny side down on my clay. Now, this is clay that I've rolled out to the number five setting. And I'm going to set it up kind of high because I want to also make some earrings out of this with the single with the single uh, wing. <clears throat> and to make this a little easier, where is my cardstock? I'll cut another one. I had a little piece of cardstock I used to keep here as a burnisher and I've somehow you know how it is when you try to organize things and you can't find anything if you want to cut just a little corner off of an index card and use that it moves over it keeps your finger from sticking and it just helps you Get this really stuck down. I'll keep it there because I'll use it again. And now I need to decide what colors I'm going to use. And I think I'm going to use this purple with maybe some blue on the inside. So let me just open this is the born pretty this is the mirror um, glitter whoops I just push that down in there and glitter is going everywhere and I'm gonna see if the little swabs work You want to make sure you get enough on here that it goes down and gets on your clay. And that's one reason I do like these little swabs that comes with the mica powder. Because it kind of get, gives you something that you've got some something to use for pressure. And do the bottom wing. You notice I'm not going all the way to the end. Because that's where I'm going to put my blue. And if this doesn't work with the dauber, then I will go and I will get a brush and use the brush. Just make sure you get plenty on there where your design is. Because remember, this is a silk screen, and only the parts that are open is where you're going to get your clay. Alright, so there's the purple, and I'm going to use uh, the darker blue, I think. Let me get 
this out of the way so I'll have some room to work here. I'm going to put this on the, this is really a dark purple, but that's all right. The other purple is almost pink. But pink and purple are pretty together. And you see, I'm not worrying about overlapping because that's what's going to make it pretty. But Allison, I've been watching Allison, the one that designed these. If you're not following her on Facebook or on YouTube, you really should because she does so many pretty things. With her designs. All right, so I'm hoping that's enough. So let's see what we've got. Oh my goodness. Is that not the most gorgeous thing you've ever seen? Let me get up close for you. Look at that. So then I'm also going to do the medium size single wings. And I'm going to lay this acetate over here. I don't think it's going to interfere, but I don't want anything to take up any of the mica that's on the clay. And I'm going to put, again, the shiny side down. I'm going to burnish it with my cardstock. Just to make sure that it's all covered. And then again, I'm going to start with the purple. Or in this case, it really ended up being more of a pink. I'm going to put those down here on this side, this end. Now I'm doing this on really thin clay. So if you want it to be more substantial, you can use a little bit thicker. This is rolled to a number five because I wanted them to be very dainty. Okay, now let's look at our earrings. Well, this didn't come through quite as well. Probably because I didn't put enough mica on them. I think I was trying to press a little bit too easy. I don't think I'll ever line these back up. I'll have to do two more. So let me just cut this part off. And actually what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn the clay over. Make sure there's no bubbles. I'm going to go put this back on. Let me, where's my acetate? The only thing about acetate is you can't see it. 
and I don't want the silk screen pulling up any of that. Actually, I'm going to go this way because I'm limiting a little bit more on my space. And this may even push some of the glitter down into that clay. So let me do it again. And this time I'm going to put more on here because I really, I didn't do as much as I did on the double wings. Don't know why. I guess I just figured it was enough. I'm fairly new to working with mica powder and stencils, so I'm kind of learning as we go along. But you can see how you can do a lot of these at one time. hope that's down through there enough but you can do these you know several at one time if you just used a smaller tile I mean a larger tile Sorry if my hair got in the shot. I was just making sure. But I was getting everything covered. Now hopefully this will come out a little bit better. Oh, it did. I just needed to take my time and stop rushing like I have a tendency to do. So there's my earrings. So I'm going to take the cutters. Let me put this away before I sneeze or something and mica powder goes all over the place. And again, I'm using the little craft storage boxes that I got from Dollar Tree. See, I have this one marked Chrome Glitter, and I've got the other one that's Chrome Mirror. So now I'm going to cut these. So I'm going to place these to where the black is even all the way around and that looks about right and just give it a little bit of a wiggle and that's that side so use the other cutter for the other side Let me see. Just give it a little bit of a wiggle. Not a lot, just enough to get your edges in there. Oh, that's going to be so pretty. And then this one goes on this wing.
give it a little bit of a wiggle. And this one goes on this wing. I love having a right and a left cutter. That's one thing that we miss a lot with our cutters is the mirror image. How many times have you cut a shape cutter and had to have the same shape on both sides? I'll pull up my extra clay. Now I have been taking a skewer or something and going around the edges to get rid of some of this extra clay. Allison waits until she's finished till after it bakes and then just kind of sands it off a little bit. So you can use whichever method you want. If you're afraid you're going to mess it up by going over the raw clay, then by all means bake it with this little bit of a rim on the outside. And then when you take it out of the oven, just take a little piece of sandpaper and or an emery board or something I'm sorry, I had a little issue there. But just take an emery board or a little piece of sandpaper, whatever you have, and go around the edges to smooth it out a little bit. And I'll probably do that also, but I just want to get the majority of it off. Oh, it's going to be so nice. She's also got butterfly cutters that are similar to this. That has the butterfly wings instead of the dragonfly wings. But I love dragonflies. I don't know what it is about dragonflies. And I've got some real pretty ones here in Virginia. I just, I'm sorry, I, my, my mind just kind of went off on a totally unclay related subject. But look at that. And that's all I'm going to do. I'm going to put this in the oven and bake it for an hour because I want to make sure it's nice and strong. And then we'll put something, we'll put these together and do something. The only thing is I'd really like for this to be dimensional. I'm thinking, let's see, let me get my little bowl. I'm going to use the little bowls, but I want like a little bit of dimension on these, so I'm going to take these off and hopefully not totally ruin them. Because they're burnished pretty well onto this tile. I think I'm going to just give them a little bit of a curve. And then I'll do the same thing with the 
single wings because if these are going to be earrings I'd like them to have a little bit of a curve too. All right, that kind of fell at an angle so I'll just put it on there at an angle. If I can get the other one in the same position So I'm going to put this in the oven like this and bake it for an hour and then I'll be back. And everything is baked and I apologize. I started sanding some things before I even turned my camera on. I've already done the wings, I mean the sing single wings, the earrings, but I wanted to show you just I'm taking just a little piece of sandpaper and just running it along the edges here to smooth any sharp pieces that might be left from when they were cut. Doesn't need to be much because this clay is very thin and most of the excess was cleaned off before we put it in the oven. And that's all I'm going to do. It's just that little bit. Alright, so there's our wings. Now we need a body, so I'm just going to take a little uh, marble sized piece of clay and I'm going to start rolling it. I'm going to do the tail end first. Now most of the uh, dragonflies that I have here near my house have a real long narrow tail. And then it goes up into like a body. So I'm going to actually what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to slice off the tail and then I'll slice off a piece for the body. And just make the body a little bit thicker than the um, tail. I'm going to take a little piece, a little bit of poly paste. I'm going to stick that on the end of the tail just because I want it to want to make sure it sticks. Actually, I think this needs to be a little bit bigger. Let me I'll make that into the head. I want to make this a little thick because I'm going to be pressing the wings into this. So I just want to round the ends a little bit. And I'll just go ahead and put the rest of this poly paste on the end here. And stick the tail on there. Let's see, here's my paper towel. Let me just get that on so that it's really nice and straight. Now 
Now my tail I'm just going to take uh, maybe a toothpick. I don't want anything sharp. I'm just going to make some little indentations. on the tail so that it's not just perfectly straight. It, it, uh, if you look at a dragonfly's tail, it looks like little segments of things pressed together. And then I will make this into a head. Well, actually, I'm going to wait and put the head on after I do this. I'm going to take something flat. I'm going to open up a little area there, take my toothpick and put some poly paste in there. See if I can come in and still and I'm going to stick this wing into that little slit. So let me do it again a little bit closer. I'm going to take a tool, anything you've got that'll make a little slit. Take a little poly paste. And I think I've told you before, my favorite tool is a toothpick. Just put the poly paste inside. Then you can stick the other end in there. And you can be sure that your wings will stick. Then I'm going to make a little, make a little head. And I'll do the same thing. Just even though this is raw clay to raw clay, I want to make sure it stays stuck. So I'm just going to put a little dab of clay there, and this will be the dragonfly's head. So there we go. So now this is going to go into the oven again. And while this is baking, I will work on my earrings. So I'll be right back. Now these are going to be my earrings and they're going to hang like that. Or maybe they'll hang like this. So I'm going to get my little drill and let me find a piece of I usually keep a piece of foam and all I see is my well I'll use this I'm gonna do this from the back so I don't mess up anything and I'm gonna drill a hole using my little handheld drill Make sure I get it in the same place. Whoops. I pressed too hard and I broke it. So what I'm going to have to do is take some poly paste Put it on the back. You see where I broke it? Right there. It's not totally broken.
So I'm going to put this in the oven. With I'm back. And my little wing is all repaired. And I've already drilled my hole. I just wanted to drill it to make sure that it was going to work okay. And where is my... I have an earring finding that is all ready. Here it is. I found my piece of foam. But all I've done is opened up a large jump ring. I'm going to put this through the, through the hole. And then through the earring. And close it back up and we will I already have I've already done the other one now if you wanted to add some bling if you wanted to add a uh, maybe you would want to add I'm doing this with the wrong hand but maybe you would want to add uh, a bead or a crystal you know you can do that I don't like long dangly earrings and this is going to be long enough for me I am all thumbs this morning it's actually been several days since I did the last part of this video but there's the earrings and see, there's just enough curve to them. See, just a little bit of a curve. But that way, they're just not so flat. But there's my earrings. And I've been debating several different ways of doing my dragonfly. I could drill holes here and here and connect something to it or I and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this little screw eye see a little bitty screw eye it's a Tim Holtz I think I got it at Hobby Lobby and instead of screwing in the drill I'm just going to use this as my drill because I want a little hole And then what I'm going to do after I get it in there is I'm going to take it out take it back out and add just a little bit of liquid clay in there or maybe I wonder if the weld bond would work. I think I'll give it a try. I really like weld bond. It's a great um, strong uh, glue. You don't need but just a pinch. This is my glue and this is on my Amazon site. And I'm going to just take this screw eye and make sure all sides of it are covered in the glue. And then I'm going to screw it back in. just so that it'll hold it good because I don't know how easily this would stay and I'm going to have that eye facing the front because I'm going to put another one of these in it to hang it by let me get my little toothpick because there's a little bit of glue here and I just want to it does dry clear <coughs> excuse me
And before I do the rest, I'm going to coat this with the UV resin. And I use Donna, Donna, Teresa Salgado's resin. Probably should have done that before I put the rings on there, but that's all right. Let me get that out. And I also bought her her brushes. I've been hearing such good things about her brushes. And the brush that comes with the resin is, is great, but it's a little large. So let me just look at these. I think I will stick with one of the medium-sized ones. These are just fantastic. They look really nice. I can't wait to try them. I, I've heard, like I said, I've heard nothing but good things about it. And I think I'm going to use this brush with a slightly rounded tip. Get out my cup and my resin. I'm not going to need much. Probably should have opened my brush before I started. <clears throat> Excuse me, I have a frog this morning. It has been raining so much here that I do believe there's a lot of mold in the air. I'm just going to brush this on. And turn this down so I can get the top part. Teresa does show a little snippet of how to get the little tiny bubbles out of your resin. And the first time I tried it, I burned them up. Not these earrings, it was something else I had done. But this will also make them nice and strong. And I'll do the same with my dragonfly. See how it makes, can you see? Does it show on the camera how much this makes the colors pop? You just put a small amount, very thin coat. If you want a thicker coat, you can add a second coat after this one cures. But this doesn't take but maybe five minutes to cure. And I'm also going to do his body. And his head. Let me pick him up. Picked him up the wrong way, but I'm not going to put him down again. And I'm going to let this sit for a minute to let any bubbles come to the top. And then I'm going to put it in the oven for about five minutes, and then I'll be back. Okay, uh, it's been about five minutes, and these are totally cured because it was a very thin coat, but look at that. Isn't that beautiful? And 
and then here are the earrings. Now to finish this off, I've opened another jump ring. I'm going to hook it through this eye. And pull this back together. Now, I don't know if I've shown you this before. I believe I have. But when you open a jump ring, this one being a swirl finish, it's hard to find the end. So I run my fingernail across it till I feel the rough place where the seam is. And then I open up, but I twist it. I don't pull it apart. I twist it from one side to the other. And if I twisted this back, it's going to still be perfectly aligned. So you just, whoops, I don't have it. Don't have it in my hands right. So just move it back and then it the ends go right back together. So that's just a little tip I thought I might show you. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it on this pretty on this nice cord. I have a cord, it's a uh, it's a wrapped rubber cord. It's wrapped with some kind of thread. I'm assuming it's a silk thread. It has these nice ends on it with a lobster clasp. So I'm going to just put this through the eye pin. Let me go ahead and hook it so I don't lose everything. Come back out so you guys can see what I'm doing. But there's my necklace and my earrings. And I ended up not having to do uh, what Teresa has shown. What she shows is using a little cigarette lighter and just going over very quickly with the cigarette lighter and it pops the bubbles. But I don't really see any bubbles. So I ended up not using them. But there you go. There is the RJ Crafts Allison Merritt Designer Series with the Dragonfly. Can't lift this up very well with the cord on it. Let me hold it. But look at that. Very pretty. So I hope you like this. I will be doing more uh, videos. I'm going to be probably placing another order. Uh, not an order, but my designer team, my design team order. I will probably be doing in the next couple of days. So I just wanted you to see the possibilities with this. I've been waiting for this one. I started to get the butterfly, and then she came out with the uh, dragonfly, and I went, oh man, I gotta have the dragonfly. I have a lot of dragonflies in my yard, and I love watching them. So, there we go again. Another beautiful pendant and earrings made very easily with our cutters and the silk screens. See, I haven't even cleaned those off yet. So give it a try. They're awesome. So thank you very much. I'll be back soon with another tutorial. Bye-bye.